Good evening, Wiffle Ball fans, and welcome back on the PAC Network for the 2020 Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Tournament, the Vintage Edition, and running through the championship games, the second game of our, the middle game of our triple header here, and it's a rematch of the first game, the 2011 championship won by Staten Island over the Blue Bulls, and this is the 2018 championship game, and it's a thriller coming up next. Uh, between the Bull Bulls, Blue Bulls, and Staten Island. And we have Joe Tyrone, captain of the Staten Island Yankees, with us alongside Ali Skelly and Jeff Rudberg of the, the Blue Bulls. Glad to have you aboard, guys. And welcome to the PAC Network tonight for this championship game. Joe, you guys, for Staten Island, you've been in a plethora of these championship games. And but the Blue Bulls have got a seven or eight year absence and looking to get some revenge today. Sure. Yeah, they came in hungry, that's for sure. And we've got Ben Harvey on the mound Allen for the Blue Bulls. Bulls. Leading and up Jeff and Allie, he started long. out as Gotti a little Jordan toddler Gotti on your team on the point, long. actually. Three pointers. And now he's all grown up. Thank God. I'm just glad I don't have to face him. Ben Harvey on the mound for... This will be a good angle to see his, uh, see how good he is. Oh, one thing from the, oh, look at that. One thing from the watching the 2011 game now to the 2018, we've got the HD format. <laughs> uh, uploading the uploading the gate files to the, uh, to the YouTube channel. It took a lot longer for the... About the 2015 Marco, game on, on than the first few. Count three, We've got a, a Blue Bulls text thread going on right now for Alley and I to monitor, and a lot of the Bulls are not happy that their 2018 version is in HD and their 2011 version of themselves is <laughs> <laughs> in standard. Swinging and missing hey, 2011 Marco. was the first time we had the championship <laughs> live. We were, we were jumping, <laughs> jumping jacks that we could get it on. One's punched back to the mound. Harvey flips it easily to He's a very good Skelly fielder also. For the first out. And Harvey's an excellent yeah. fielder. He's, and he can hit. Yeah, he can hit well. Yeah, he can <laughs> really well. Matt Long. Uh, I believe 2018, Joe, you might know. It was 2018 or last year, we moved the mound back three feet, or the rubber back. Three yeah. Feet. Long's walk-off homer. It did. That was last year, I think, was the that first year. Crusaders in the wild card playoff. I don't think it was this. I don't think it was for this championship. I think it was the following year, 2019. And okay. that, that, okay. you know, that, that, took, that took much more to get used to than I thought. Travis Roy almost making the play wheel by. Ruddy, I can smell the Euro truck in the back here. Oh, sure. <laughs> Missing that to a bunch of the games. Oh. <laughs> Mojo. I've got my Chex Mix, the garage. Someone, in, one of the women in the garage makes a, a little baggies of the Chex Mix. So I, uh, I, I live on that all weekend long broadcasting games. So you hear crunching a little bit during the games then. You might hear it a little tonight too as well. So. It's all right. It's all, it's, it's all good. I, uh, Ruddy and I usually, usually hit up the Euro truck up there like midday Sunday. And it's, it's always touch and go. Like, should we do it? Should we not do it? And then we just look at each other. We got to do it. Joining us here at the championship game. It, uh, we got a, we got a, we got a good one here tonight, huh? Yes, we do. Top seed and an upstart seventh seed and going down on the strike. The one thing you notice about Ben Harvey is his release on almost every pitch is from a different point. Every time, whether it's all the way from the side, right straight ahead, you know, from under to, to, uh, to top. Yeah. It's always a different release point. Every pitch for every batter. He's more of a brother. Yeah, I got it. I mean, I want. I wonder. Yeah. I mean, he grew up watching this, right? Yeah. Like, well, how old was he? I wonder when he saw his first seventeen straight years, first wiffle ball game yeah. here. He's yeah. probably eight. Yeah, eight years old. <laughs> you know, the listeners out there, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I like this is the product of. Uh, this is the product. This is the future right here. Yeah, out of the Lee Roy, the like Lee Roy Wiffle Ball Factory. Yeah. Travis Green Travis and Oscar Green on the shells are part of that. First time they've been, uh, Andrew first Harvey, first time Ben's brother, is on the shells as well. Three and three so far. They're two and three. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. They're, they're statistics are incredible. This one hit off a of Harvey. Flipped they? first. Oh, Skelly can't hang on. Wow. Who is that guy? That's embarrassing. That was bad. 
<laughs> but check your shoes. <laughs> Definitely your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Legs are tired. Arms are tired. Brains are tired. I think he might have had a feet out. Island has played the extra game. Google's got the one thing I've heard that um, Staten Island notoriously on the way up on Friday stops at Saratoga, and I heard the Blue Bulls stop at Saratoga on the way out on Monday. Yeah, they don't race on Mondays anymore, though. You change the schedule. Um, so that, that's not a thing anymore. Um, oh, wow. But, yeah, they, they dropped Mondays to get an extra week of the season in, so same number of racing days, but a longer week for the restaurants. Oh, wow. I did not know that. both games, Travis. It's a, it, was it usually empty when you guys went on a Monday? Is that why they did that? Uh, we're a bunch of railbirds. We like to be up there with no crowds. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll bet the maiden claimers. We don't care who's running. But, boy, did we take a jump this year. How about that? In so many one-run games, so many low-scoring last at bat. Last few years, it's been a pleasure. The most fun I have the championship game is that Travis comes over to do the color. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. We vary on a lot of topics. This one hit well to center, but Patrick Collins there to make the catch for the out. But Alabama kind of ran out of gas, but what a great run they made to the championship game. And, you know, that's the one the one blowout was the nine. So what were you guys thinking in this game? Because you had been – had you only been to the to the championship twice? Yes. Or you were there? We, we had we had three second-place finishes yeah. at this point. Maybe they got away from them late. They had three before this game. By Matt Long. Yep. Uh, Who did you play? Early. Uh, you guys, we lost to the B. I, I mentioned that the Rutland and Hot Dan, maybe. No, uh, those are the only three championship games. Um, you guys have been the top seed an awful lot. That was the thing. Yeah. I think in this in this game, if I remember right, you were the top seed, right? Yeah, you had to have been because you're you're. Uh, you're the home team. Well, Ben gave up like one run the whole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. Matt, the, uh, Matt, yeah. Bang that one foul. Excuse me. No, no problem. I actually had a very good um, year that year as well, but it wasn't one run. Like I gave up like four or five, but compared to Ben, it was like <laughs> it's like fifty. So I was feeling pretty good going into this game. I wouldn't say overconfident, but I was feeling pretty good. So what were you guys thinking going into this? This is going to be the year? No. No, how are we going to blow it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that right? Okay. 100%. There is, there is a third, second place. We well, lost. you almost did because we came back at the last inning. So that would you know, normally, if you come in with that, that, that no thing. Spoilers. We, we might have we, we might have come across like we're overconfident, but that was definitely never the case. We were always thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Red, Red Sox pre-2004. Yeah, 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 yeah. On edge, overthinking every decision. Yeah. Make decisions that <laughs> things are going to be. A solo shot to start things off. Pat that was a silly pitch. That was right over the plate. Line shot home run. Really silly pitch. Number 50 in his career here at the Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Tournament. And that, we had the extra Jeff, was that number that 50 in his that career? With, is that what we mentioned? Oh, I don't know. That's what they. That's what you just said right there. Yeah. In the, in the broadcast, that's what it sounded like. Yeah, this was a down year for Tad. Three home runs. It could be real easy to walk them, but I think that there's a lot of gentlemen. I said, Joe, you mentioned it in the in the uh, the first broadcast here tonight, but it's all about uh, pitching and defense. Defense is so big. Oh my goodness. I mean, if you're not, if your team's not making plays in the field, then it's, you can hit, you know, you can hit eight home runs in yep. a game. It's just not, you're not going to win it. The worst feeling is in the field and the other team just starts running and you're throwing the ball around. Yeah. And it's really terrible. In our early years, we really did not have hitting at all, but we had all really good fielders and I was, and I was just, you know, really feeling good and I was pitching really well. Almost every one of our games were like two run games, almost every single one. And, and it was, it was mostly because of the fielding. It's unbelievable how that changes things. So when I, whenever I watch games here, I'm always looking to who's, who's playing well. In other words, who, who's playing the field well, because yeah. they're, they're, the, they're the teams that's hard to beat. And you guys had a really good fielding team. Yeah. Well, Ju juice right here 
Is Joe, are you a, pitching around? He's a stud. He's a stud on third base. Uh, no, no, no. I wasn't pitching around him. My ball is just moving a lot. Um, in the beginning of this game, it was moving a lot. Mojo asked in the first game that about the, the, the defensive wow. position that's the most important. A couple guys mentioned third base. I've always felt catcher is because you can steal outs that way. Gally, I'll, t- I'll tee you up. I think most important is first base. Yeah. I mean, you're throwing the ball like Bruce, you're, you're catching it. It's spinning. You're grabbing the hole and you've got yeah. a 30 foot run rate. You're winging it. And I'll inadvertently throw Allie a slider and just trying to get the ball over there. So I think that's, that's pretty key. Yeah. I, I think first is definitely difficult, but I, I, you know, third base is tough, you know, shortstop is tough. they're, you're, they're going to get a lot of balls. I think we have Tad out in left field. He's obviously athletic. So he's, he saves us a lot. Um, but I mean, just look at that play right there. Yeah. Like third, third base is, is, uh, is big. If you want to hide somebody, stick them at second base. The ball goes there once a game if that. Yeah, Mojo mentioned that that's where he plays a lot of. That's where they put him on the good fellows. <laughs> that's second. I think the, yeah, there's a couple of the big hands first baseman are really fun to watch here. Uh, the Buckners, I forget his name. I think it's Blum, last name. He's, he's tremendous around the bat, you know, first base. He's tall. He's got big hands. Either, or it might be Jeff Sutherland. Exciting people here in the ballpark, there's, and there's a few others that just snatch everything. We're just lucky, honestly, that there we haven't there haven't been more injuries. Because guys just barreling down first baseline. I mean, you can hear them, like, especially at the Fenway because you're staring down yeah. the yeah. foul ball. <laughs> it's like a train off the tracks, and I'm just like, oh boy, here we go. Just trying to brace myself, but then I also pay attention to the ball coming at me. But. Defense is definitely the key. I mean, if you have a pitcher who can who can field, which we do, um, and you know, you're right about a catcher. A catcher can steal outs. Well, think about Ben; is he just gets so many strikeouts. Yeah, um, we've had other pitchers that pitch a little more to contact, and even if you get a ground ball, it's hard to field. If, if Ben can take that out of the game for you, you have less potential for errors. It makes it a lot easier. I think J- JMO in uh, right field has had probably some of our most spectacular plays. Uh, the game before this yeah. one. Uh, the little Fenway game is a, a you know, le- uh, right fielder who can could take balls away because of the low fence is important. Hey, Joe, you've, you've pitched probably more games in the tournament than anybody else. Adding the other fields, how different is it? At I, I call only the little Fenway games, but it's got to be different on the other fields as well. Because of the, she, she hit the runner going back to first. I thought it was a six. Oh, Joe, we, we'll get Joe back in a minute. Not only did Joe lose the game, but he got cut out of the, the feed here. Yeah, good timing. Yeah. <laughs> Ruddy's got connections. <laughs> White juice. Another good play by a third base. Ali, this winter I spent some quality time with one Mr. Joe Marsh. Just throwing it out there for you. That's that's always a treat. I was able to uh, to get up to uh, I was able to get up to St. Lawrence when they um, opened the rink back up. Oh yeah, after the renovation. That looks nice too, by the way. It's beautiful. Yeah, and I, I got to spend a little time with him, and we had a big alumni reception up there. So it was. Uh, it was actually like the last thing I did before, before lockdown, basically. Wow. <laughs> but it was good to get back up there. And yeah, he's, you should get, you need to get him up to this and, uh, and get we're him, working, get him do some broadcasting because he'll yeah, have people dying. On we're working on it. Mike Gilligan was out with us that night and, uh, he, um, he, he, he still has a place in Burlington. So I think we're going to make it happen. Yeah, Mike Gilligan actually, um, he was still coaching at uh, UVM when I had my injury, and I had my surgery oh, at, yeah. at uh, in Burlington. So uh, Mike Gilligan actually, I remember that uh, he came to my he came to the hospital when I was there, and um, you know, obviously we had played against them, but he didn't know me, um, you know, besides having having coached against us. So um, I always appreciated that. 
Yeah, and Joe, Joe, Joe had a couple of surgeries at uh, the hospital in Burlington as well. With his back, I believe. Trash generated, food sold. Yeah, he's one of a kind. I'm certain it was a bigger attendance. It's with two less teams, too. Pat's got some, he's got some yeah, big fish here, here. Here it comes. And I want you to see this pitch that he hits. And then we're going to talk about the last inning. Oh, this one's hit deep by Collins. It's gone. All right. Just out of the reach of Eric Long. Patrick I don't know Collins. if they're going to show the replay, but you should see that pitch. With a solo home run. <laughs> I think you think he might have think Joe looks like he's, you're telling him he might have caught that or could have caught that out there. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't move. I was gonna say that, but I didn't want to get you. He didn't even move. I'm like, what? What? What, what was that? That's what I said. <laughs> said, what was that? He's looking at me like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you guys are always a fun team to watch because you're always yelling at each other. <laughs> hey, we're from Staten Island. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, both you guys played the game hard and throwing the bats and temper tantrums, little bits of temper, but the cameras, I think, change that more than anything. People now see it, more people see it, and you guys have really cleaned things up and have more fun without, you know, throwing the bat after strikeouts and things like that. Not just you two, but everybody else as well. So that was another really good play to end the inning. And then the inning before, uh, you guys made a great play too. So two really good fielding teams. And it was a really good game because I don't remember there being really any errors. Other than what's his name not moving. Look at that. That's just beautiful. And, and, and the inning, and inning before that, you guys did the same thing. Same, almost the same exact play. I think part of the fielding is the experience too. Yeah. The the like mental clock in your head of how how much time you have is yeah. takes takes a couple years. I mean, there's teams that there's teams that can just absolutely mash the ball, and uh, but they just don't. You know, they, sometimes they don't even get to the playoffs. Speaking of right. yeah. we got the hooks in Tom Perrin, I think. I think he's been texting me like three or four times here yesterday. Really? How we doing? How's the money count? And he and he gets he gets. So Bruce, were the were the scores higher since they moved the 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 uh, yeah. uh, the, uh, the uh, mound back? In I think it really. Um, that, was, that was the purpose of it to to get a few more home runs. Uh, it was to cut the strikeouts down a little bit and maybe cut the velocity down a bit. And I yeah. think. I think the guys like you and Billy that strike out just as many throwing, you know, you know, arm angle and control than the guys who get amped up and just start throwing hard. Uh, I think that moving the mound back probably probably took away a little bit away from that. And more contact, I believe, was the was the idea. Yeah, but I tell you, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys talked about it before. But the first three years, I, I was, I, you know, I played wiffle ball when I was a kid, little kid, always played wiffle ball. So, you know, the rules are going to be different depending on where you play or, or, or what game you're playing. So like a lot of wiffle ball is normally like three people. It's automatic, stuff like that. So it changes from, from, from venue to venue. So I understand that. But what the rule they had that drove me crazy for the first three years, and I had a problem all the time, especially the first year, there were no balls. Yep. So <laughs> that was the most frustrating thing. There was a, there was a, there was a, uh, Stevie Virtue was at bat, and, uh, and he would refute this, but I'm telling you, Mario threw 50 pitches. So I turned around to Larry, I said, Larry, this is outrageous. How about every 10th you know, <laughs> ball is the ball, all right? Can we do that every 10th ball? He would have walked already. And they just would not change it. And the second year, they wouldn't change it. The third year, they went to six balls. And that really hurt pitchers like me and Billy Doyle because we're programmed to throw strikes. So when I was a kid, you know, we used to – the strike zone was the, uh, was the knob of the, of, the, uh, of the garage door. 
and that was the strike zone. So you had to always try to throw a strike because, you know, and that's, we got pretty pinpoint perfect. So playing the first two years was really, really, you know, I wouldn't say I'm making it sound like it was impossible, but it was, it was frustrating because the, the games were, you know, only seven teams the first year. So it wasn't so terrible for the game to last so long. But as, as we went to the third year, they had to make the change because the games were lasting too long. So it, it just changed everything. So um, I'm glad they finally went to four, but then they realized that, you know, pitches adjusted and uh oh, oh it is there no that's that's a surprise he, he makes up for it later <laughs> who was that patrick. Ah. oh that was patrick oh maybe that that's what got him mad <laughs> well the, pat gets mad yeah that's true yeah. new father pat collins It's funny. One year we had. Yeah. Uh, he swung at it and hit him in the face. Yeah. Did you see that? One year we had Dave Mullaney. <laughs> Dave Mullaney, grandson of the inventor of Wiffle Ball. And he, he of Wiffle Inc. And there were people complaining. It was, oh, it was after the uh, YouTube video of the catch. People, the comments on there were, that's not the way you play Wiffle Ball. Those aren't the right rules. And we had Dave Mullaney straighten it right out. He said, it's Pat's backyard. Pat makes the rules. <laughs> yeah. That's on the box of a wiffle ball. So, but you're right, Joe. It's played a lot of different ways. Ooh. And control is the big thing. A lot of people, the home run derby style, use a lawn chair. You have to throw it into the seat of a lawn chair. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty popular, actually. Yeah, yeah that's it's pretty It's easier. Popular. It's easier. Yeah. Ooh, but it's always, you know, it's, it, it, the thing about wiffle ball is, is, is being able to strike people out, you know, and, but if you don't have any, any, any balls, it, it, it yeah. just makes it really difficult, you know, as for a pitcher, I could tell you, but I know it was well-intentioned. They, they, they didn't want the games to be too quick. Um, they, um, you know, they had their reasons, but anyway, so they adjusted and here we are. But now, you know, so now they move the mounds back because the pitch is adjusted and, and people started throwing too hard. The championship game that you played yesterday, I don't know if you talked about it, but there were bullets that, yeah. <laughs> that the Comets were throwing. And then I responded by throwing hard, too. So those last three innings, they had to be in the 40s, at least those pitches. They were, we were burning them in there. I just got a text from Dr. Mario, somebody. He said it wasn't him pitching that time. He, it was the second year you went to six balls. Okay, second year. Okay. Dr. Mario, who's that? Mario. Be Mario. Who else could be Mario other than Mario? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Joe, who's the best? Who's the best uh, pitcher that you've ever faced? For a two-out home run. The best pitcher? Yeah. Or who's been the hard, hardest to hit for you? Third straight inning with a solo homer. It's Ben Harvey going deep. Former member of the Goodies Pointers. That's right. He spent some time in the. I gotta think about that. Um, uh, the other team well, I guess the last like five years, I haven't even hit one home run. So I would say every pitcher. So, <laughs> um, but for some reason, I think Billy Doyle is a great pitcher. But for some reason, I'm able to hit him, and I hit him better righty than I do lefty, and he's a righty. But I'm able to at least make contact with him. I'd say uh, Ben uh, had a pretty hard time uh, last year against him. I think I think I, I think I kept the ball in play for the most part. I struck out the last time, but I think after that I, I kept it in play. Um, Andy Tennant with his kids. Is, is, I gotta think. I don't. Know, I gotta think about that. There's, a, there's been a couple of really really good pitchers. I'd say Scott Trahan. One year I thought I thought he was impossible to hit. Ready? What do you think? You must have somebody ready that you hate to face. Really. Like, freezer never, yeah never never hit him yeah. <laughs> you talk about getting the once you fall down the count it's, it's over <laughs> talk about hook line and sinker with him the wow 617 look at that came up to scout it out he was going to be here one day 
So in the game before, um, we had an injury in the team, our right fielder, Jamie Leak. You can see him limping around the sidelines between innings. So we're down to uh, nine healthy players at this point starting the game. Wow. With no, with no no reserves. Like, we don't have a bullpen pitcher, nobody to come off the bench, and uh, might be something to, to keep an eye on the next couple of innings here. <laughs> New faces pop in there. <laughs> Brendan, Brendan, doesn't he? Let's find out. Ned was ready. Ned Cork free. He was ready to go. Ned is Ned's always ready. Actually ready. Uh, yeah, I got to say hello, to, shout out to my guy Ned Corkery. Always comes over to say hello when he gets to Little Fenway. And that play during the gave me a book of his poetry as well. The last three years. Yeah, when the game would go to overtime and they had extra time to slide something in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, Ali, this isn't the only time a game. This is the first time a little Fenway you went to the mountaintop. But explain some of your other journeys to mountaintops the last few years uh, to raise some money. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll talk about this year's because it's the most recent. But yeah, it was. It was. Um, it's been the last five years, and um, you know, just always try to do some sort of physical physical challenge. Um, and obviously. The, you know, um, uh, I get to talk a little bit uh, at the fundraising thing. And so most people know my story as far as breaking my neck. So, you know, this is a near and dear, this tournament and fundraising is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. But, um, you know, it really, uh, it goes, you know, sort of beyond that for me personally. Um, so, yeah, so this year we, we, we tried to make it, uh, you know, we try to outdo um you know the previous year every year and and uh most of the time we're pretty successful so we we paddle boarded across lake winnipesaukee which was 18 miles then we hopped on a bike and rode 70 miles to the base of mount washington and then we hiked up to the top of mount washington so it was a long day we started at 6 a.m on the lake and then ended uh we got off of mount washington at about 12 30 at night um but uh it's just it's um it's always my favorite time, favorite day of the year when I'm able to do this. And it just, there's a lot of different emotions that go through me. Um, and, uh, you know, so that's, that's sort of my, that's how I, that's how I do my fundraising. Um, you know, everybody that's does. the day. How do you, how do you warm up for something like that? How do you, how do you, I, I yeah. for that? Cause it's not, that's just the one day. I'm sure it's a lot of work and it's gotta be months before. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, um, you know, one of the things that when I had my, my injury to my neck, when I broke my neck, I sort of always promised myself that I would, that I was going to, you know, stay in, in the best possible shape that I could. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I work out every day and I'm a little bit crazy with it. Um, so it's just one of those things that, you know, um, just try to you know, be in, be in good shape. And it, you know, obviously, this with COVID nineteen and travel restrictions and everything else, it, this tournament had to be, you know, the, the real tournament kind of postponed and try to come up with a virtual idea. And we're really, thanks for all you guys for the fundraising. But Ali, the uh, Boston Marathon being canceled this year really hurt the Travis Roy Foundation as well. And same thing with the Falmouth Road Race. Yeah, it was it was interesting because, you know, obviously, you know, the, the spring was it was a difficult time for everybody. You know, it was uh, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of, uh, you know, people were scared, you know, scared and you didn't know what was happening. So I, you know, I thought my, this thought didn't last long, but I was like, you know, you know, how are you know, how are we going to how am I going to fundraise? And, and uh, but that lasted about 10 seconds. And, you know, I knew that I was going to just do sort of what I always did. And, but I've, I've been, you know, it's been amazing. This will be, um, the one year that I ran the marathon for, for Travis, I raised, I think 10,000 and I'm over 10,000 now. So, and I'm usually right around six. And, uh, so pe people, you know, people are obviously, you know, they've had a rough, rough couple months and, and people have lost their jobs, but they're, they're still willing to donate to a good cause. And, you know, this is obviously, uh, 
you know, they, they know it means a lot to me, but, but it means a lot to, that obviously means a lot to them too, because it, if it didn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't donate. So, um, and, uh, well, we're really happy to keep things going with the virtual uh, virtual presentation. We've got some great events on Sunday as well with Travis Money Count. And uh, we have E.M. Swift, the co-author of 11 Seconds, his first tournament appearance. He'll be on uh, uh, Sunday at 4, 4 p.m. with Pat and myself. So... So we try to keep things going, and we understand over we're all well over two hundred thousand in the fundraising on the thermometer, and I I think that's that's a bigger accomplishment than than raising a uh, half a million dollars when money is flush. Yeah, uh, more power to you guys for for, for staying with it. So we're just happy to give you guys something here, and the, and the wiffle ball challenge has been tremendous. I mean, and not not just for the participants, but for other people to. To, uh, yeah. to share the experience it's been fun to watch and, and uh i think i think joe at yours yours was one of my favorite videos to watch if, if not my favorite i thought that was that was so much fun to make i can't even tell you yeah that i don't was, know if you planned to, to see your ad on the bus i don't know if that was planned in there but that, that was that was pretty funny <laughs> wasn't that crazy yeah. i did not plan it i said you know i'm gonna i'm gonna film this look at this and then it, it came out great because actually, I'm going to use it. <clears throat> I'm going to use that video. I was saying that in the previous uh, broadcast, um, we at Compass that I that I work with um, has 10,000 or 12,000 agents across the country, and so um, I'm going to I'm going to put it in agents of Compass. But I've been waiting to do it along with the marketing people in Compass to make sure that we you know we put it out the right way, and then uh, into this. Um, uh, they have a, a fundraising thing that's called Compass Cares, and you have to register your uh your non for profit that you're raising money for so we're in the process of doing that once we get it registered i'm gonna i'm gonna i, I sent it to management at compass and they absolutely loved it they, they thought it was great so it's gonna launch i was trying to get it in this week before the tournament would have been so the money would you know would, would see that but it's probably gonna go next next week and i think that it's gonna catch their eye a little bit more that they actually see the compass ad so it was very cool but that was a full day we actually we filmed, we went to, um, and Richie wants me to put another version out just, you know, just for fun, not to fundraise. Um, it was a, almost a full day event and we went to all our childhood homes and, um, you know, some of our parents still live there. And uh, we were hitting wiffle balls over the childhood homes as well as Tommy Long's house and stuff. So we, we, we spent the whole day, you know, doing that stuff. And then at the end was um, actually the uh, the ferry was the next day. We were on our way to the ferry, and our contact, one of the deckhands, uh, said that the ferry that we were going to get was out of service. So we had to go back home, and then we had to fil film it the next a uh, couple of days later. It was actually almost about a week later. But um, yeah, and then we I sent it out to my guy. He actually is in Phoenix. Is a guy I used to work with years ago that, that went from real estate to doing um, film, and I sent it to him, and he was able to follow the ball over the bridges. You know. So it was hit with, yeah. with the with the streaks and stuff. So um, it was really it was really fun. Yeah, there's been a lot. Of, there's been a lot of all the good ones, and uh, it's definitely been. Mojo's was great. Yeah, Mojo's was good. Yeah, yeah, they've been they've been fun to watch. Yeah. Joe, I might need to revise my answer on the on the best pitcher. I'm now over five against you tonight when you count the last one. All of which to end the inning. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so there's there's an answer. All right, I like that. My word. <laughs> Here's a big Actually, I tell you, this is this game, I really felt good. And then I'll tell you what I was thinking that last pit, that that last pitch, that last at bat. But I was feeling really good. I don't know if I, I don't remember if I give up any more runs after this, but you can even see the way um, I'm also starting to change my release points and everything. It's like that. in the game right there. He took it away and my guy. <laughs> Make sure you guys are watching. <laughs> yeah, he took it away. That was a shot right there. That was great. And again, it's fielding, right? It's always fielding that wins the game. I mean, Certainly, Matt pitched a great game, but um, it was great that you guys that you guys won this because I was starting to feel really good and I was starting to feel really really confident. 
Well, this is a big spot here. First and second, no, or nobody out or one out. And Ben looks like he's halfway out of pitching and out, pitching out. Of that would have been a three-run shot. Yeah. That would have been the game. That would have been a three-run shot. I feel, like, I feel like you guys have a few more guys, a little bit, a little bit more power. I mean, we have, we obviously have, we got Tad, Juice, you know, Hammer, Hammer now. Um, who else that can sort of go? Oh, uh, Harvey, Harvey, is a Harvey, yeah. <laughs> um, but as far as the rest of us go, mostly just contact guys. <laughs> but you guys got, I mean, at least half your lineup, maybe a little bit more than half your lineup is. is uh, well, we had a we had a game that um, everybody hit a home run except for Timmy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it, Travis. I got my about maybe five years ago. But yeah, we have we have some. The problem of the last couple of years, and even this game, like Woody's a great player, but he was trying so hard to hit home runs every time. Um, he, I don't, I don't think he got a hit in this game, if if I remember right. But he's a great hitter. I mean, this guy, he won the home run derby the year before. I think he won it with like 17 and um, <clears throat> well, more than that, but he's, he swings really hard. You know, when he, when he's all, you know, psyched up and ready to go. I think this is, probably this, when, this is probably when we're thinking that we're going to blow it right here. Oh, oh yeah, we are. Uh, we are. He's loaded and he can easily hit a home run too. I think he strikes out. <laughs> oh, go. what a pitch. Yeah. Got him with a breaking ball, Harvey has over the over the you know what does he pitch for us? Two years, three years, ready? Uh, two years. Yeah, there was one year where he shared duties, and then yeah, <laughs> then he is, it was over. <laughs> he he has pitched out of a lot of jams. Wow. Like he does, he's got some ice in his veins. That's Corey Hammer, by the way. He's not even. That's his first time playing right field. That's, he, was that's our, the, he was our DH to that injury. Yep. Yeah, that, that was the injury that uh, Ruddy was talking about. Hammer makes that play on sheer athleticism. Is this the timely money count alley to ice the batter? Yeah, <laughs> like, like I need to be iced. <laughs> yeah, Ben struck out sixteen in this game. He was tournament MVP. Wow. Yeah. Against a good team, a very good hitting team, a good contact team. Yeah. No, we were a contact team. We, we, we've kind of changed over the last couple of years. Everyone's always hitting, trying to hit home runs. And this game, I was trying to tell him to take two strikes because they they, you know, he, he had really good stuff and he was fooling them outside the strike zone. So I was saying, take two strikes and they're like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, based on this game, Joe, you might be the toughest. I don't know. I don't think I've ever hit you very well. I, I definitely that, haven't hit um, uh, Billy Doyle very well. Um, and then there's somebody else, right? I don't know who it is, but I, I always – they for some reason, I always – it's it's nobody that other people struggle with, but for whatever reason, I struggle with whoever it is. And I can't think of who it is. But Bill Sleeper is a good pitcher. And he, yeah, he is, he is good, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, does that, he does that crazy follow through right to the yeah. almost right to the batter's box. <laughs> he's also so tall, he's you know, yeah. moving the mound back hurt a guy like him because he is stride to the plate. Yeah. Now, what about Dan French? As far as the now, who who just hit that? That was Harvey. Harvey. Yeah, see, that was amazing that he hit that pitch because I was purposely out of the strike zone, a riser. I wanted to set him up for a sinker next. So I was throwing a strike zone, a, a, a riser out of the strike zone. He went up and he got it. Very good hit. That's that's the 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 sinker that you throw. I I just always think that's coming, and I just yeah. that's in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Allie, we may have to play these guys again in a year or two, so let's not give away too many of our. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could be this year. <laughs> I'm working. I'll, I'll work on hitting the sinker. That'd be great to get a trilogy with these guys. <laughs> these games are on YouTube now, so you can study the tape. Oh, that's good. I didn't know that. Yeah, coming up next is, uh, speaking of Dan French, his championship game appearance pitching for the Crusaders against uh, in the 2013 championship game against the Boston Beef. I guess you let the game... 
Billy Doyle will be a guest along with Art Page and J.J. Strausser of the Crusaders. Players adjust, they'll adjust themselves. So before we go, go further, here's a shout out. Thank yous to our sponsors. Something we do at the live tournament as well. New England Federal Credit Union, Shorepoint Capital Partners, Duncan, of course, Armelo Realty, Vermont Tent Company, Bolton Valley Resort, the Windjammer Group, our friends here at the PAC Network, of course, the Wall Doctor, Smuggler's Notch Resort, the Essex Resort and Spa, the Boston Red Sox, thank you for your great prizes and raffle items, excuse me, silent auction items. And the silent auction item, silent auction will run till Saturday or Sunday at seven if you haven't taken a look there. And of course, Wiffle Inc. That's Sunday at 7 p.m. Yeah, auction closes Sunday at 7 p.m. So take a look at the items on the online auction. I got, I got a bid in right now for some golf. At uh, Walpole Country Club, I think. A lot of golf and a lot of skiing. Oh, juice. Down to first on the infield, hit leadoff hitter aboard Tim Long to start the sixth. I believe that's a big batter to reach. Is it this inning or the next one? One more, Bruce. One more inning. Next inning. I think one more. Put it this way. A couple of his brothers are a lot faster. Derek Long, his brother at the plate. Ooh. Yeah, MVP, we got to start thinking of the, about that. Jeff, we miss your tournament odds this year. You've always been uh, no. very good at setting that. And Everybody's off the board. <laughs> and next year, I believe we're going to try a bracket pool at the okay. beginning. So Eric where you pick the division winners, the uh, four semifinal winners, Yep. Four, four teams to reach the semifinals, two in the championship game, and the winner. Oh. Everybody for like 20 bucks of surprises for that. That's another fundraiser we can try. And your odds will be very important then. Yeah. Or do I uh, throw some, some fake ones out there, get people off the scent? Uh, let me know about that, but I won't let anybody else know, okay? <laughs> i have to see the divisions first. I feel like every year everyone thinks they got the tough division. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get an email from four different people. We're in the division of death. Yep. You know, okay, what about the other three or four divisions? Well, there, there were a few years that um, regardless of who we were playing, if we saw an 8 a.m. game on Saturday, that was our division of death. <laughs> yeah. Consideration. He will be a strong candidate. Ted Skelly, of course, his offense. Yeah. And one thing you don't count on with the round robin schedule in, in this is the playing four games on a Sunday. That's got to be hard. It's a haul, yeah. Especially if you play early, you get a long lag between the games. You're sitting around. That's just a phenomenal. Yo, you guys have done it more than anybody else, probably. A couple home runs as well. We talk about Ted Skelly's offensive numbers in a in a league of their own, and and Billy. That's where the Euro purchase comes in. Oh yeah. You got to go to the food trucks. <laughs> I'm a sausage king, sausage guy. I respect that. The, uh, the breakfast sandwiches there are tremendous. Yes, they are. After the leadoff single by Long, a big shutdown inning by Harvey in the six strikes out the side. Right, we, we got to give a shout out to Hoagies. Oh yeah. If there's anybody from Ho Hoagies listening, I think, I think people talk about you know Black Friday and the retail business. <laughs> And they go from in the red to in the black. I think we do that for homies every every Friday with ball tournament, getting pizza and red sticks. That's the place in Essex on yeah. the way up. Yeah. They might they might go out of business because we, we we're not going to be in town this year, honestly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's blue Saturday for them instead of Black Friday. We're <laughs> rolling. I'll tell you what, there's still lines six feet apart though at Joe's Snack Bar every every time I've been up this year. I believe that. We had the beef Staten Island uh, original teams in the quarterfinals and one quarterfinal, and we had the all Rutland semifinals. So some interesting matchups in the playoffs early. Pat and Beth felt they had it made one year where their little, the, the, the place that sells maple creamies right in Jericho Village, 
before you turn on to uh, to go up to the little Fenway, they had a sign out in front that said, get your Wiffle Treats here. So they thought that was the first cross marketing that they they had for from anything from a little Fenway. So there's our injured player hobbling uh, down Look at that. first base. He convinces Brendan to come off the bench to pinch hit. Uh, one of a long history of poor coaching decisions for our team. <laughs> So was it Ali? Was it Dustin that got hurt doing something in the inning before? Like who did who did Jamie just pinch hit for? Yeah, Dustin is. Yeah, because Jamo is playing second Look at right this now. Rocket out of the box. <laughs> the, the camera can't even keep him in the frame. <laughs> and then Brad. What's next for the foundation? I know that was our pinch hitter. Look at Jamo's playing second right now. Yeah, we're we're. Uh, so Dustin's hurt. Dustin's out. Dustin Dustin got hurt, and, and Jamie had to come back in after his injury from the last game. And eventually, we said to heck with that and bring Brendan in. Like that knows. Yeah. So again, we're thinking this is you know we're gonna we're gonna blow this here. This is. Uh, and Joe, you guys had no idea that they felt that way. Uh, not really, but it was it was a weird feeling because I kept saying to the guys, I don't, I, I can't believe we're down here. I feel really good. I feel like we're going to win this. I don't know what's going on. It was, you know, usually, you know, you know when you're going to win and you're going to lose, especially as a pitcher. I, I, I don't, this is one of the few games I lost where I thought we were going to. So now I got that hit. Now you guys are like, here we go. <laughs> You just probably the, both times. Yeah, it's probably the fifth time we felt that way in this game. Oh, is that right? Okay. So, last call here for Staten Island. I, they've heard that several times in their life. Maybe this weekend as well. But Vinny Tremarco starts things off with the base hit. Matt Long is the tying run at the plate. I mean, you just can't win a game when you have 16 strikeouts. That's crazy. I didn't realize it was. The Island. It's hard, hard not to just get distracted in the game this here. Is, sorry about that. I asked. Oh, this one to Porter, and he runs it in. And adding to the stress with Blue Bowl, there's an unnamed um, Blue Bowl parent of prominent brothers in the team that is counting down the outs in center field. Oh. <laughs> We're out there here, pin drop, and all we can see here is two more outs, two more outs. <laughs> it was someone in right field that was screaming the whole time, but I'm surprised you can't hear on the video. Screaming. <laughs> Big swing and a miss. Probably a little behind time-wise, but you know, with this kind of riveting wiffle ball, it's, it's this is great. <laughs> no, so our first year was um, the third year of the tournament, which would have been. Thanks very much for joining us, and maybe end quick here. Two thousand four so or so. Okay. Yeah. So we've been here every year since at this point. This is fourteen years running with three second place finishes. There's a lot of uh, a lot of history on our shoulders here. Drive back to Boston. Drive back to New York. And Alan's usually a very, very good uh, flat hitter. He's a contact guy. <laughs> He's the guy who almost hit the home run the last day. Uh, two I, I, I to be cliche, but I, I, I lose words. I, I don't yeah. know how. We got a ship on for the slap, flat hitter. <laughs> We're probably so terrified of the home run, we want everybody in the right field wall. going to the left side. Just oh, no, he that. He was going to that was, was that wide open. On. That's the key, key word here. They're going to get one at first. Skelly will run Alley. in and yeah. Staten good Island job right there, Reddy. Nice play there. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, Reddy, you moved over for to. Oh, we were at a well, we had no second base. We had one leg. <laughs> I didn't realize how much of a role that that injury, those injuries played in the game. Especially in the wild card first round against the Crusaders. Yeah, this could have gone south quick. And this one, oh. and they do it again. <laughs> first pitch, two run One strike over away. By Jory Rigotti. And that was a simple curve. That was like. And we're tied time. at three. Oh, Ned. Oh, Ned. <laughs> oh, it looks good kill. Yeah, look at Brendan. Look at Brendan. <laughs> oh. Hey, credit to us for bouncing back from this because we, we pretty much packed it in. Yeah, this was the only guy trying to pick us up. Everybody else is heading their hands. 
Ju- Juice was immediately right back up. Who's, who's Juice? Third base. Just, Justin Lawrence, the third base. Don't worry about what happened, but what might happen next. So he gets ahead of Woodford. Again. I think he strikes out again. He had a tough, he had a tough um, a game, if I remember. But he's hit some monster home runs, this guy. <laughs> like, like ridiculous. He's had a heck of a tournament. Nice pitch there by Ben to the rise ball. Harvey, we got two and two. Ner- we got some nervous fans. And Harvey, too. Harvey, too, stuck with it, too. He could have. Uh... Yeah. Swings and misses to get out of it. But the Jordan Rigotti two-run yeah, homer enough. with two down. <laughs> look at that, nine eight, hits. Three, three. We both have nine hits. We go to the bottom of the wow, that's we'll great. Take look this is the tough score to get out of here. No doubter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's a no doubter right there. The looks on the faces of the Blue Bulls. But they didn't lose it. They didn't go behind. They just tied it, and the Blue Bulls can walk it off. And it's Jeff Rudberg, the odds maker at the plate. <laughs> what do you do, Ready? Uh, I get on. I forget how. I thought I was going to score the winning run of the tournament. Swing and a miss there. I, <laughs> I, so I haven't gotten on base with Joe the whole night. I've watched two whole football games. <laughs> Up toward first, Colburn can't grab it. I forget if it was a walker or what. Probably not. No, no, two. Rudberg with new life. This is you, Jeff. Up. Yeah. He had a last at bat win last year. I, someone must run drop it or something. Second. I get on somehow. A daring base running by the Buckners. And oh yeah. Be a base hit for Rudberg. It's on the spin. Classic wiffle ball two. hit right there. Right must spin on it. Two and this guy, if you could see him with Timmy looking Rudberg. at me right now, you have no idea. Top of the order, Ali Skelly. I, 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 I a lot. Only two, I still come at you. Ali Skelly. Oh, I thought that was it. Off the wall that was such a second. Safe. Safe as the ball bounced. That's in. my power right there. Play their Morning ball. track power. Long. Hey, Brinkley, you never know. In the outfield, really just had to turn and fire. <laughs> yeah, Tramarco made a nice play on the bounce. That's my acknowledgement that I might have been out there. <laughs> Pat Skelly now at the plate. They're going to talk this over whether to pitch to him or not. I mean, can't tease him outside. He goes Joe, were you really considering walking there. him there with nobody out? Oh. No, but yeah. this is this is what the Tab was talking about before because he's yelling at me, be smart, be smart. He wanted me to walk him. With nobody out, you can't look the bases though. He wanted that me to walk him. Yeah. Home run, fourth of the tournament. Tyrone, a crafty lefty, who slashed foul. No, you got You got to pick. Took a little off of that one. That was a little off speed, and but he's he's still clean. Well, point back. way outside. Oh, that was the that one. Was Tad, oh, that was it. Skelly <laughs> going for the win there. Tad Skelly with a strikeout. Huge strikeout for. That is a. <laughs> he was. He was telling me in the previous broadcast he thought for sure I wasn't going to pick that. One. Two hits for three for Ben. By the way, right now I'm. I think I've told Travis seven times in this game that you've got to be neutral in this game. Not the relatives involved. Yeah. It would be fitting if. Uh, so that Andrew was out of town this weekend. Andrew I did, was I did out know, of town. Yeah, now that you mentioned, I didn't, didn't notice. Yeah. Like to Ooh, big swing and a miss. Oh, really starting to move at the end. I was, right. I'm feeling really good. He's helped me out the last couple summers. Yes, he has. Like summer I said something. Yeah. Uh, I, like I think. It might have got windy big or something. Swings, yeah, yeah, my ball was moving. Three and yeah. two. Of, you know, You're nice and loose, loose Joe. That's why. Yeah. For Harvey, load the bases with Seven one out. Game. Oh, oh man. Man. Corner, yeah. strike three. Tyrone came right at him. It caught him looking. Wow. So, two I mean, runners aboard for Justin Lawrence. Full count, winning run at second. I Not know. Lawrence. Ready, we did our job, Ready. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not the home run guys. We're the get on base guys. We're <laughs> game's over. Lawrence at the plate. Boy, you could cut the tension with a knife. That's, those are two big strikeouts right there, Joe. Yeah, I, I had so much adrenaline running right now. I have no idea where it came from. It Plus, you got Justin Lawrence staring at you from the on-deck circle. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't put anybody else in. <laughs> I think he's got a cut on his cheek from a line drive whipple ball at third base. <laughs> oh, big swing oh. missed by Lawrence. Roll off speed. That's what I went to. Roll off speed. Takes a deep breath. Big swing. That, that, that flag is blowing out. Yes, just... it is. You listen to you hear you hear Travis. The flag's blowing up. They flipped a third. Oh, what a play! Good. 
Wow. Well, I was scoring one run. Wow. And, and they All right, free wiffle ball here. On, but they pit Tyrone the craft. He runs on 11 hits now. Out of it. <laughs> Gets Lawrence the middle of the order on the field. That was funny, Travis. That we we went blown out. It's blown out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly Three, neutral. Tim Long, Eric Long, Vinny, so here's here's Marshall, Brennan coming in to play second base. <laughs> we finally get the the limping guy out. Wow. Brennan's only inning of the tournament. Or probably in like 10 years. Wow, that's great. I didn't even notice it. I didn't notice it. We, we were hoping. <laughs> Whether it's the visiting team, then they'd have to hold off the... Blue Bulls in the second bottom half or the last at bat. Every one of my boys is going for the big home run. Every one of them. Yeah, I forget what happens in the top here. A little bit of a difference between the bottom half. Is it the bottom of the eighth that we went? Roster batting order versus. I think it was the bottom of the eighth. Yeah. It's, uh, they are deep. They are very deep. They're solid. In different ways too. They I may think not have the power, one, two, but once they here, run, they know how to run the bases and take that extra base. <laughs> Swung on and missed. Strike three. Another strikeout for Harvey. Minor leagues now, they put a runner on second base. The previous, oh, what they do? he had a, the extra start the 10th inning. This was really a great game. It really was good. That is some excitement at the. We talked about this last night in the two championship game broadcast. Late in the game, especially so close games, how quiet it gets there. Yeah. So there's a lot of people. It's smart. They, uh, I think all, every, all this it kind of depends on who makes the last game. If they have a local presence and a lot of friends and family, you might see a few more folks. But if it's out of towners like most of us, yeah, <laughs> just the, the true fans. But even though it's just quieter than normal, yeah, not good for the sport. Plus, it's the only game going on. There's no noise from down below. So Harvey gets on top. Two strikes on Eric Long. Swings and misses for yet another strikeout. Well, you guys feel sore on Monday. I have no voice at all on Monday. Oh, uh, I bet. Yes, exactly. It could be here a long yeah, time. Could be. I'm ready. I think Anthony gets on. I think I made the last this out. Is, it's Anthony Tremarco at the plate. I think Anthony gets on. I got to believe all of Staten Island is probably tuning in right now. There we go. There we go. <laughs> These guys are more popular than the, the Staten Island Yankees minor league team. That doesn't draw very well from such a big Ooh. area. Ooh. Oh, oh, so too far. That, that, that had a lot of that had a lot of plate on it right there. Yeah, yeah he said it was too fast. Oh, no, too fast. Like, like that. Might have been too fast. Yeah. yeah. Swung on and missed. There you go. Comes back to the curveball. Excellent curveball for Ben today. Fifteen strikeouts. Middle of the eight. Right. Justin's got his leg up, got the ice on there. <laughs> we're, we're limping to the finish line. <laughs> Literally. I, I, Does Brendan get an AB? Uh, I don't think so. I I think they, MLB, but yeah, we're at top of the order. Some of the stats. I'd be curious uh, how many, what the record is. Is it top of the order? And, the uh, not, not quite. No, I think Pat was uh, batting uh, down in the order. Oh, you're year. right, you're right. Somebody Pat was batting fourth. Might have been Dan French two years ago. You were batting fourth? At 16. I remember no, uh, uh, I was batting first, and then... Um, I can't remember, or yeah, because Roddy, you were nine, then I was one, and then uh, I can't remember who was two. Maybe Tad is two. Yeah, so we're probably like five, six, seven right now in the order. Yeah. So Pat was probably six or seven. Yeah. I think he's on deck. Yeah, he's on deck. Okay. Yeah, so he was probably six. I think Hammer was only, five. Only home run swings in the on deck circle right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, this is going to be a riser. Ali Skelly to coach a third. Nope. This one's hit well, but not enough. You can see that one die. All right. Catch long in center field. Patrick Collins, he's already got one home run tonight. Yes, he does. It's a good thing Pat had, had uh, good at bat here because <laughs> the rest of our lineup was <laughs> wounded. Yeah, really settled like. down, Travis. He hasn't allowed a run <laughs> since the third. Three solo homers for the Blue Bulls. You cannot shake him. Ooh. Doesn't it go to three and two? I don't know. You gotta believe Pat. You gotta believe Pat's thinking about last year, though. At this point, not the owner or in 2011. Sorry, Pat, Pat's ended about seven tournaments. 
So now it's one and two, and I said I'm not throwing him the overhand curve. Oh, is that it? That's it. They do Monday and Monday. I'm not going to throw him the pitch they hit the home run on. But then I'm thinking to myself, you know what? He's down the order. He's not a home run. A run a I, right now, I might make the decision of throwing the same exact pitch. All right, all right, all right. Not yet. So oh, this, right. oh, this is I haven't thrown him the same pitch yet. So now I'm saying to myself, all right, if it's meant to be, I'm going to throw the same pitch. I'm going to strike him out. If he hits another home run, it was meant to be. That's what I'm thinking in my head. It's so I'm the same exact right. pitch. And this one is gone. There you called it, Ken. You called it, Travis. Patrick Collin homers to right Same in the exact Blue Bulls. For the first time in their 16-year history, are wow. the tournament champions. Wow. 14 Unbelievable. years. I'm going to bed. Another last <laughs> bat win, this time a walk-off homer. The first walk-off homer oh, to Steve decide Redberg. this tournament, Travis. Well, that was Redberg with the uh, – that was me. Oh, that was you? Yes, he was that was you, that's right. He's, he's in Colorado. Well, guys, it, tremendous back-to-back -back games, a high and a low. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Well, these games are hard to watch for you guys. Yeah, they are. 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 Yeah, uh, in those games. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, Bruce, thanks for putting this on. Joe, fun hanging out with you. Hopefully we get a yeah, same here, guys. tie here for the third title game. Hey, okay. guys, stay, stay thanks healthy. Very much. Thanks to Ali Skelly and Jeff Rudberg of the Blue Bulls and Joe Tyrone. Thank you very much uh, from the Staten Island Yankees. Thanks very much for the double dip tonight. And uh, we'll see the Staten Island Yankees tomorrow night. There will be another game after this between nice. the Crusaders and, Blue, and Crusaders and Boston Beef. But tomorrow night, Staten Island and the Jackhammers go head to head, back to back, uh, on on I on think Friday we're night. Five of the championship games of the ten that you're showing. How about that. Yeah. So anyway, well, thanks for joining us here on Game Two, the middle game, and we'll be take a break and be back for Game Three between the it was the 2013 championship game, Boston Beef's last championship in the tournament. And they won it over the Crusaders, Crusaders loan championship game appearance. Thanks wow. very much, guys. Okay, guys. Great to see you. Absolutely. See you later. Uh, thanks. Thanks. See ya. thanks for joining us. Stick with us after this quick break. We'll be back with, with the third game of our Thursday night triple header as we watch Patrick Collins winning it in the 2018 uh, Travis Roy Foundation championship game.